Hi, this is Chris with Peace of Mind Art and Crafts and I'm here today to give you a short tutorial on how to make these uh, cute little canvases. This is a flat canvas and they look like this. The back of it. And I've done a, a couple of them. They have a small um, ribbon on the top they hang on the wall and the back is covered also there you this one this one has a ocean theme back okay so let's get started supplies you'll need are your canvas and you can do this on any size canvas um, I just happen to do them on this like to do them on the small canvases um, this is very similar to actually doing if you use the same technique you would do to do a larger canvas and we're gonna first of all we're gonna collage it this first one I think I'll do I've selected some some papers to use I have some old pattern paper I have a stamp that I made collage stamp. Several of the other um, people that I watch on videos have done these stamps and that's where I got the idea from. Got old book pages, a tea bag, some music sheets, lace doily, and then kind of a focal point. So let's go ahead and start. I keep my Mod Podge in one of these little bottles and I use Mod Podge. You can use any kind of uh, matte medium. This is actually the matte finish, which is, uh, uh, I like a lot better than the glossy finish. Okay, so I'm going to cover this entire thing with the Mod Podge. I use a, a sponge brush. Brush it on. Now I can go around to the back edges also on this. Uh, since I'm gluing down this piece of very thin piece of tissue paper, I don't need a whole lot of glue. And then I go over the top also with the Mod Podge. Okay, I can. Cut off the excess. Cut off the corner. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this around to the back. I do for a little bit of Mod Podge. Now this back will be covered over with a piece of uh, scrap of paper. To make it look nice and finished. We may have time to do a couple of these. Maybe just one. We'll have to see how it goes. And you'll notice that I have wax paper underneath that is so it doesn't stick to any other papers or um, really basically anything that I've got glued down here already. Um, let's see, I think I'll put a piece of um, the music paper on here. to wrap this around. Sometimes when you get on the edges like this, it's a little bit hard to, to, to glue it down, but don't worry, you can always trim it off later after it dries. I would wait to trim it after it dries because then it's um, 
it won't tear away from the from this area. Okay, let's see. I've got a piece of book pages. Then on here. You don't have to cover the whole thing with one type of paper, but it, it makes it a little bit easier if you do that. And notice how I'm using kind of neutral colors on the on the uh, top part. Just kind of covering. In there with this. And you'll notice I used the uh, book page here, so I kind of want to use it in a different area also. Same for the music paper. have to go on there straight. I put that one on kind of on a diagonal which is fine. Bring it around to the back. Okay, now this started to come off. I'm just going to go ahead and take it off. Add a little more glue there to the edge. Okay, I could keep adding some more things to that if I wanted to. I think I will add a little bit of the um, the doily. Mm, maybe over here on this side. I'm not going to try to go over the edge with that doily because it might. It might be hard to turn the edge with the with the um, the doily cut out. If I wanted to, I could go over here on this edge also and do a little bit of it. pretty much keep whatever I'm putting on here right now I pretty much keep it flat for, for them for the moment and then later on I can add, could add some other embellishments to it <clears throat> okay once I'm satisfied with the way it's going I also use a an old uh, gift card Very gently, especially when you're going over tissue paper. I did want to show you just a little bit of the the tea bag. What I did was I saved the tea bag, let it completely dry out, then I took the tea out of it. This adds a nice little color over the top. I think I'll put the the lady down first. Oops. A little bit too much match punch on there I think. Hope you all are doing well today. Now I don't have to put that on straight. I think I'll put it on there fairly straight, just kind of over to the left. I try not to center things too much. Okay. So you notice it kind of has a filmy look to it right now, but it, it'll dry clear. And that's one of the reasons why I use the uh, sponge brush too, is because it doesn't show the um, the brush strokes as much as a regular brush does. And like I said, you can also use the 
the credit card to kind of burnish it down to get rid of any bubbles. The small bubbles, or if there's a little part where there's a bubble, doesn't bother me. And most often it dries before you get to your, uh, before you get to the end, after it dries, then, then you get rid of a lot of that uh, wrinkling. Okay. Let's see, I think I had kind of wanted this on there. It's kind of, it's a little large. I kind of like it, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. Notice I'm putting things on top of other things. That's perfectly fine. You like to overlap. Now this I am going to cut off on the edge after it's dry. I could if I wanted to have it go over the edge, which, let's try that and see how that works. Okay. That's much more time I have. I'm going to go ahead and start another one and let that dry a bit. In this one I have this cute little picture of this. This is one of the Tim Holtz paper dolls. They're called paper dolls. He takes vintage photographs and makes little um, punch outs of them. Digitals. And uh, they're so cute. That little girl looks like, oh, I gotta hang out with the brothers. Oh, I was gonna show you also on here how if we put a little bit of this tissue paper over the top of, say, let's try it over the top of the woman. Kind of makes the the photograph look aged. Even more. Okay, for this one I'm going to use um, a piece of this napkin. I'm just going to cover the whole thing with the napkin. This one would probably just have time to do the to do the front. Okay. And notice I'm squeezing my um. I put I buy my Mod Podge in a bigger bottle, and then I keep filling this one up because it's a lot easier than putting it in a in a bowl or a dish. Because uh, if you have extra at the end, then you, you you can't really put it down the drain or anything. So it's a it's a pain trying to get it back into the container. So that's why I do it that way. Okay, Oops. let's do it from the back, and I can see my corner better. Okay. Oops. 
I'm not known for my um, neatness, especially when I'm working. And that's fine. Everybody has a different kind of uh, method of working. If you should tear some of this on the front, don't worry about it unless you're unless you're uh, not going to cover it over something, in, in which case you'll have to cover it over with something. Uh, let's put a little bit of this uh, this tea bag over it. And sometimes you can like crank, kind of wrinkle this paper, the tissue paper especially, wrinkle it up on purpose and that gives it some texture on there which is really nice. I like that. I like the effect of the tea bag on there. This is a piece of like a flower that I cut out. You can also use I use that on here. It's just tissue paper. Sorry. Let's see. Okay, and on this one, like I said, I wanted to use these these kids. They look nice there. Whoops. Sorry. Bumped you. There's another stamp. See how that would look. Yeah, I kind of like that there. I don't want to put that on too straight. Put these kids on there. Okay. All right, we got this one. Fairly dried. I am going to take a, some ink. My Distress Oxide. I'm going to go around the edges. It isn't quite dry as, I, as I'd like it to be, but for the purpose of the video we'll go ahead and, and do this. Notice how when I go over the the doily, that kind of makes it show up a little more. And you can even take your uh, your ink to the side like this and go over the edges. Okay. I'm gonna put a 
a back on this real quick. Let's see, get my the color I want. Maybe this red would be good. And you'll also notice that I put a charm and that if I want to put a charm I, I would do it now while I've got the, the ribbon. This this ribbon is a little bit too thick to put a charm on so I might just glue one down to the, the top here. But you'll notice these have the, the charms on the top and this one also has a little turtle charm down in the coral. Okay, so once I've got that placed where I want it, I think it's a little bit too uh, long. So I'm going to cut it off a bit. And then when I glue this down, I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to use my 3-in-1 glue. some glue where I want to glue it down to. And then I'm going to glue all the way around. I'm going to cut the backing paper. I'm going to use this one just because I'm on that one. I'm going to cut it maybe just a little bit, tiny bit smaller than the than the back. And this, this side is sorry about that. Is that a frame? I can always trim it off as I go. Maybe trim down a little bit. Ideally, I could cut this paper when the when the front was dried, so I wouldn't have quite as much trouble doing it that way. Okay. Okay. Now's the time that I would I would add a charm if I wanted to, or I could add. sentiment like this one has on here. Just up to you, whatever you want to do. See if I can find something quickly while I... This book is also by Tim Holtz. It has different words in it. your heart. I like that one. Just have to decide where I want to put it. 